If you've ever fumbled a grenade throw, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, whether it be in real life or in a video game. <laughs> Make sure that you comment with the story of how it happened. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is brought to you by Simply Safe. Big thank you to them for helping cover the production costs. If you guys are looking to support the channel, the biggest supporter of this channel right now is Big Daddy Limited. Big Daddy Limited is like the Costco of the gun world. It's going to be an initial fee to get in. And once you do that, cheap products um, from a great company, highly recommended. Well, by cheap, I mean no your normal products are incredibly cheap. Get in there, 99 cents for the first month. If you're looking for sick ammunition or plaid or bags, that type of stuff, you have Vertex, 25% off the Grand Theft or something like that. Ladies, gentlemen, and of course, my often overlooked, but not by me, Lee Enfield Rifles. Welcome to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about plate carriers. Specifically, we're going to be talking about the Spirit of Systems Overt LV-119. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's put it on and talk about it. Now with movie magic, we have the plate carrier suddenly on. Now quick note, I am incredibly sick right now, but as we know, the show always goes on. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into it. A couple quick notes about the LV-119. So the LV-119 is a minimalist plate carrier that is scalable for a variety of mission sets, anywhere from LARPing in your mom's basement to actual professional usage to everywhere in between. Not saying that LARPing is not a professional endeavor. Don't get me wrong there, gentlemen. But the point is it is scalable based off of um, the products that Spiritus has to offer. Now, there are many different products that are currently out for it, and there are more that are constantly being released for it as they update design or release new products for it. So understand that what I have might not be the type of plate carrier that you might get from them in the future just due to the amount of products that they release and how they change it and that type of thing. But in any case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go front to back the way it should be. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this plate carrier design, a little bit about how I have it set up and then we'll kind of uh, finish everything up. What I really like about the LV-119 Overt is the shoulder attachment. Now, both the Overt and the Covert are the same general shape and size and everything's the same except for the ability to attach things more easily on the Overt for more Overt things. So in any case, many plate carriers live and die by the attachment point of the shoulders. Uh, the Cry JPC, famously, uh, that was kind of a weak point for them where the material that they used, while very lightweight, tended to wear through, and once it wore through, you're kind of SOL. The plate carrier kind of broke and had to be refurbished by, by a variety of companies. In fact, many companies built their living off of fixing JPC. So one thing that I can very much so appreciate is that the fabric for the Spiritus is continuous from the plate bag itself into the shoulder attachment point. Now, the Velcro is at the very top. That means that the weight of the carrier is pulling the Velcro down onto itself. This is in stark contrast to the Ferro Concepts Slickster Advance, which while I loved it quite a bit, um, I do believe a weak point was that the Velcro was at the very back only and wasn't a whole lot. Because of that, some people complained that in muddy conditions that this Velcro would fail. Now, personally, I didn't have those issues, but I did note it. Now, that wouldn't be an issue with the Spiritus, which I think has, in my opinion, a more superior design by the way it is made. So I can definitely appreciate how they have everything um, routed in this case. Another really cool thing about these shoulder straps is that for my gentlemen who are using a variety of different devices, push to talks, radios, end user devices, um, there's just a lot of wires that you end up having to route and that's kind of a pain in the ass. So the LV-119 was made specifically to allow for the routing of wires to be easier. You have insertion points at both shoulders, right here and here on the other side. Um, you can of course run wires uh, underneath the shoulder straps and you can route them directly through the plate bags, which with exits at the bottom and of course at where the nexus clips are. This allows for you to more easily uh, manage your cables. Cable management is a real pain in the ass and the overt and cover, they both make that a little bit easier compared to many other plate carriers that are out there. Now, that's <coughs> now that's not to say that the LV-119 is the only plate carrier that allows for wire management. I'm just pointing out that they did a very good job of allowing you to manage it. Now, a couple other notes here of what I got going on. Um, I've got my uh, Fortrex 401 
right here on my shoulder. This isn't where I actually keep it. Rather, this is my work rig, um, what I'm using for work primarily. Rather, I keep it right here that way. Um, I just know where it is. So I put on my rig, I detach it, and I put it on my wrist. Just as a quick note as far as why I have that there. Um, these little Velcro straps and loops right here I use for routing of wires, especially my PTT wire coming off of my comms. Don't always have somebody to help me undo and kind of route it through. So use these to both manage that and for antenna management um, as needed and as necessary. Just as a quick note, because I'm sure those questions are gonna come up. Okay, moving from there, we're moving down to the front right here. So like I mentioned before, uh, end user devices, right? So whether you have the Cogworks case or the Juggernaut case, um, obviously I prefer the Cogworks case. I think they make great stuff. You, most plate carriers nowadays allow for the mounting <coughs> of those kits because they're so ubiquitous nowadays among uh, modern warfighting community. So in any case, the Overt is no different. They have mounting op opportunities right here with uh, the addition of Velcro on top in case you want to mount something different, like a giant American flag. I know many of my uh, army dudes are into that, just the bigger the better, and I'm down with that. That's pretty cool, actually. So this allows you to mount that. Now, for my guys who've been wor working with that, they know that you have a shit ton of wires to deal with. Again, due to the routing through the Exus and the Nexus clips, that allows for pretty smart routing um, anytime you have to deal with your EUDs. So uh, very cool there. I think that makes it a lot better. Now, this plate carrier is pretty centered in the fact that you have two push-to-talk loops uh, running horizontally right here. I'll show you it on this side right here. This allows you to mount uh, most types of PTTs that you typically see um, out there in the wild. Now, the ones I'm running right here are the TEA um, push-to-talks, which are pretty awesome. So right now I'm running two, and again, obviously, uh, depending on what you're doing, you're going to run one or the other. Um, for most people, I typically recommend that if you're a right-handed shooter that you keep this side mostly clear that way you can shoot now for my guys who have to run two radios that's not really an option so you're gonna have to have them you know run on both shoulders unless you're running some type of adapter that allows you to run them all through one that's kind of up to you and user preference and that type of thing in any case the ptt is good now a lot of people end up zip tying their push to talks directly to these loops i think that is definitely a good option especially if you want to ensure that these don't come off now, personally, I don't have these done up right now just due to the fact that I'm moving stuff around right now. But once you have your set positions, highly recommended that you do um, make sure that they are secure unless you need to be able to take these off quickly and efficiently. In that case, don't do it. Right here, I have Velcro loop on this particular push to talk to help manage my wires, um, cut off the radios or any other crap that I might have right there. It's just a good idea to have something to manage more crap. Moving down from all of this right here, we have um, our front panel right here. So now on the overt, it is a simple piece of Velcro that runs under and they're primarily having you use their setup. So you have the Nexus clips right here. You can either run the micro fight, which is phenomenal, or you can run something like the 556 placard, which is what I'm running right here. Now going back, I'm probably going to end up running the micro fight because I do like the ability to um, have notebooks, that type of thing, more easily accessible to me on this. Now, Understand I'm also running an abdominal sack right here. Um, in this case, this one is from Feral Concepts. I think that um, Spirit Systems makes a better one. I'm just testing this one out for right now. But that allows you to keep some other kit down there, but there's just a lot of kit you gotta deal with. In any case, having pens and notebooks and that type of thing for notes and whatever you have to do, maps, all that kind of crap, is probably a good idea. But if you wanna go ultra slick, the 556 placard is really awesome. Another thing that's cool about the 556 placard so you have these little loops here, and you can easily attach bungee to ensure that you can get really good retention on these. Now, drawing these is, drawing these is fairly simple. I, I kind of relate them to being like a better Blue Force Gear 10-speed pouch. They do a really good job at retention. Um, of course, here we have to show off the uh, Taylor Swift magazine, Good Times. That's a, that's a winner right there. So these are pretty awesome. As far as re-indexing off of them, it's not that difficult. I haven't had a lot of trouble with these. Now, compared to any plate carrier that I've ever reviewed, I think that I've probably tested this, um, uh, except for the JPC, which I ran for a very long time. I've probably tested this one the most. Um, just most recently, this went out on a, on a three-day training event with me. Uh, did some great skull drags and that type of thing through it. So I got to do a lot of stuff and test this thing out in a variety of situations. In any case, um, I skull dragged with this thing on for quite a while. As you can see, the pouch is held up fine. Now, are they as robust as you know, something that's, you know, thick cloth, like the uh, Cry magazine pouches and that type of thing. 
No, they're not. But again, everything has kind of a different purpose and everything's a trade-off. So understand that, but they held up just fine given the situations that they were in. So I don't really have a whole lot of um, qualms about their ability to hold up to hard use. They run great. Now, before we move into the back here, let's talk a little bit about what I have going on. So on the side here, you have your cummerbunds, right? There are multiple cummerbund options that you have from Spirit of Systems. You have anything from uh, what I have right here, which is the three band skeletal. You have their elastic type that have pouches built in. You have their uh, spear tubes, which you can easily clip and unclip. There's a lot of very good options when it comes to spirit systems and their uh, cummerbund setup. Again, it's user scalable for what you need. If you need side armor, they have those side armor inserts if that's something that you run or need to run on that type of thing. In any case, I'm using the skeletal system with the three bands. Now, I prefer this because I like to mount a couple different things and configure it to what I need. Now, I know a lot of guys are running their radios on the inside of their um, cummerbunds. Now, me personally, it doesn't work so well for me. I always end up getting like blisters and that type of stuff when I run them on the inside. So I prefer to run mine on the outside. I have a blue force geared pouch right here on the left side. On the right side here, I have a cry pouch. This also doubles as a magazine pouch. I know some guys are going to be quick to state, hey, I have to carry six plus one in my magazines. You're only carrying four in your kit. What the fuck, dude? So um, as, as far as that goes, so I run four right here, typically, uh, another two on the belt for six, plus one on the gun that equals seven. Uh, that's how I run my personal setup, just as a quick note. Again, depending on uh, what you need and what you do, you might be constrained as far as how you're able to set up your gear. So I understand you might have to set yourself different, just so you have an example of what I'm personally doing. In any case, um, I really do like the Blue Force gear, uh, radio pouch, speaking of which. Um, it's pretty awesome. Spiritus does make a really excellent um, inside the cummerbund radio pouch that works very well for a variety of people. It just doesn't work as well for me. But again, everybody's different. So if you're a guy where it runs fine for you, wonderful. Now you have the radio pouch right here on the far left side right here. I have a general purpose pouch. You can see right there again, a blue force gear one. This is to allow me to have any amount of extracurriculars that I might need for whatever might come up. Um, just recently I had like a multi-tool and a bunch of batteries and like an extra map in there or something like that. So it just depends. I just have it. You never know when you're going to need it. On the right side, I of course have the cry pouch and then I have an Islid pouch from Blue Force Gear. So again, set up to kind of what I need, but might not be the best for everybody. Um, as far as um, wearing med kits, I know a lot of guys have to carry a med kit back right right here. Now, me personally, I keep my med kit on my belt. That's my first line gear. That's where I prefer to have it. But if you need to, and I need to have it on my blade carrier, I do have that area open so I can have it mounted. Just as a quick note. As far as the cut of the front plate bag, um, I think it's n worth noting. A lot of plate carriers have that cut where they flare out at the bottom and then they cut in really hard. And everyone loves those because they say, Oh, hey, that's, that's cut in. That allows me to get a really good purchase on the rifle and that type of thing. The Spirit of Systems plate bags are just straight. And what they are is they're cut directly to the size of the sappy plates. So in this case, I'm running issued e-sappies in this particular plate carrier. Uh, and it's cut directly to them. So it is uh, shaped for the sappy slash spear cut plates. Um, if you have the you know 10 by 12s I don't think they're quite going to fit as well. That being said, this plate carrier isn't super tight on sappies and e-sappies like uh, the JPC is where you'll have to like shove that thing in there and it's under like hard tension. This has a little bit more wiggle room, which kind of feels a little bit better to me. I was always really worried about the JPC fraying because the stitching was under such a hard tension, especially with those older e-sappies where you had to, where they were in conjunction with and you had to have soft armor backing behind them. The newer plates, uh, e-sappies and sappies don't require that. So it's a little bit more room, but quick note to you guys, these definitely work very well with all the plates that I've tested, which are Gen 3 sap, e sappies all the way up to the newer Gen 5s, which is what I'm running in this particular one. And as far as shouldering a rifle goes, um, shouldering a rifle in it feels pretty good. It feels pretty standard for what you'd expect from wearing a plate carrier. It's not amazing and it's not terrible, just like any well-made minimalist cut plate carrier. Now compared to something like the Cry ABS, it's a definite improvement. Of course, that system was made to carry a lot more weight in my opinion. Again, everything kind of falls into its category of what works best. All right, now that we've talked about the front of the plate carrier, let's go ahead and I'm gonna take it off and we're gonna talk a little bit about the back of it. Now, quick note, <laughs> safety. Now you guys don't pay my bills, but 
simply say paid quite a bit for this video to ensure that it would cover the production costs and cover a lot of the training uh, costs that went along with this. So let's go ahead and hear what they have to say. Make sure that you have some type of home security system. I don't care what it is. Now, you know this video is sponsored by Simply Safe, and that is the home security system that I recommend because of many reasons, mostly because I like that it's piecemeal. So let me break it down. Um, budgetary constraints make it really difficult for a lot of people to just go ahead and purchase an entire security system. I like that with Simply Safe, I'm able to kind of compartmentalize the purchases so if I can kind of beef out my security as I have the funds available. So that's really great for me. So there are different types of security elements that you can plant in your house. You have your home system, the Nest, that actually controls everything. You have video cameras, you have door sensors, window sensors, window break sensors. Now, what I pr personally do is on my firearm room, my gun room, and also on my safe, I have both cameras and door sensors and that type of thing that can alert me to specifically who is coming in because I can see who it is and then I'm able to keep track of that. And that makes me have a little bit more peace of mind when I'm home, you know, when I'm away at work and that type of thing. And that's why I like Simply Safe. Now, it's also not that expensive compared to a lot of things. Make sure once you get it that you call the local police department around, make sure that you get it registered and all that. Again, Simply Safe is a do it yourself type thing. And because of that, there's a lot of savings to be made which is why I stick with Simply Safe. Check them out. Now, if you guys are really interested, there's a huge sale going on right now. Make sure you get in there, get your home protected. That's gonna be the deal ends, I believe on Cyber Monday, so make sure you get in there. Link's right below. Check it out. All right, back to the other stuff. Once again, thank you to Movie Magic. We have the plate carrier off. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the rear of this plate carrier right here. So the first thing that I kind of noticed about the um, rear of this plate carrier was how smooth it is. So compare that to something like the Cry JPC. Now the Cry JPC also uh, similar except that the Cry JPC has exposed bungees on the back. Um, this can be a potential problem for snag hazard. So I do like that the Spiritus has its bungees for its systems covered up. That way there's less of a chance of snagging any of the um, you know, bungees and having a potential issue there. So I think that was a very smart idea. And I understand you can mitigate that in the JPC with a <coughs> pack or, you know, a, a molly panel or, or what have you. But I like just the peace of mind that I have of not having to worry about it on the spirit system. Another quick note that a lot of people get confused about on the spirit system is that this does have these zippers that resemble the cry back panel zippers. And uh, I'll be honest, at first I thought that this fit them as well. However, the cry back panels do not fit onto the Spirit of Systems back plate bags. Spirit of System is currently developing their own system of back panels with probably a better mounting solution. So I can understand where they're coming from. So if you're really hot on those um, cry back panels, I'm sorry, but they're not going to fit on this potential plate carrier. And even then, um, I am somewhat dubious of um, you know, having a bag mounted to the back of your plate carrier as far as ease of getting into it. And I understand if you have teammates, but I think a pack might be a little bit more useful of a solution in most cases for a variety of reasons. And we'll talk about that in future videos, mostly due to weight, um, ability to get to it, and that type of thing that kind of messes with uh, plate carriers. Um, the recovery handle from Spirit Systems is also easily integrated with it. If you're not familiar with the recovery handle, it's essentially a better uh, method of dragging you when you're down. It's a little handle right here, hooks down into your belt system, and when it pulls up, it pulls up a length of um, fabric and allows people to be at a more advantageous position while dragging you. A really cool system, and I like that it's easily integratable um, with their own system. So good on them there. Now. We've kind of talked about most things I really wanted to talk about when it comes to the Spirit of Systems rig. Um, this is, to be clear, one of my favorite rigs right now. It's my primary rig that I'm using for work right now. It's my primary rig that I've used for a long time in my reviews. You might have noticed it um, over the past couple months or maybe, maybe about six or so months that I've been using the hell out of this thing. So I really appreciate all the designs that they did on this particular plate carrier. Now understand, compared to something like the Cry CPC or the Cry AVS or other heavier plate carriers, those can more comfortably hold a lot of weight. It's due to the shoulder pads, kind of the way they were designed. The harness system, especially on the AVS, is wonderful. However, however, if you're not carrying like a shit ton of stuff on your plate carrier, the Spirit of Systems rig works really well. Even with two radios, the Spirit of Systems carries it all very well. 
Now, as far as what does it feel like to live in this carrier? So I've lived in this carrier for about three days so far uh, without taking it off. It, well, I took it off for a couple hours and, and stuff like that. But for pretty much almost a solid 72 hours, I had this thing on. So what does it feel like? Just like any other plate carrier, guys, um, you get the normal aches and pains in your back and your lower back from carrying it. You know, there's no plate carrier that's going to be amazing and just be, you know, super comfortable and it's not going to give you aches and pains. But as far as plate carriers go, the Spirit of Systems is definitely um, among on the higher end as far as like comfortability and ease of use and that type of thing. Highly recommended um, to purchase the LV119 over plate carrier. I know a lot of my buddies like to use it. Um, I know Lucas uses it quite a bit. Um, can't say enough good things about this. It's hard to describe without actually being here and having hands-on time with it. But if you're in the market for a plate carrier, I would definitely recommend the Spirit of Systems plate carrier. If you are not looking for a plate carrier, well, that's a cool video, right? Um, if you're looking to upgrade, kind of look at yourself hard in the mirror and think if the money is going to be worth it. If you have a JPC, um, there are definitely some great upgrades with the Spiritus over the JPC. Again, that's going to come down to you personally and whether or not you think it's what's going to work. Spiritus comes in different um, colors, you know, multicam black, multicam, all your solid colors and that type of thing. If you wear multicam black, be aware it's not really a camo, but you do you. Just kidding, guys. I'm giving you a hard time. Ladies and gentlemen, these plate carriers rock, right? They are awesome. But without the training, they're not going to be cool because you're just going to be fumbling around. So make sure you get the training um, with these plate carriers. I see a lot of people who harp on people for going to the range and shooting a kit and that type of thing. People are like, why are you doing that? I'm like, who the hell cares what they do? Worry about yourself. You're probably not near as good a shooter in them as them. And if you are, then why aren't you supporting the community more? Train your plate carriers. Who, who the hell cares? It's freaking America. Do whatever you want within reason. <laughs> but um, if you're not sure what you're doing, you need that training. Uh, Bear Solutions, Haley Strategic, Cogworks, um, Darcy, uh, Tony Cowden, uh, Pat McNamara, tons of great guys with great knowledge. And I can't recommend enough guys because there's so many good ones out there. Get out there, train, train your kit, get good with it. Otherwise, it's not going to matter. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Again, the Spirit Systems LV119. And I've got nothing else for you guys. A final thing for you guys is a note that I've wanted to, I've kind of harped on it quite a bit, but that is going to be forgiveness once again. Um, I see a lot of people who are like, if anybody makes a mistake, it's like the end of the world and they're never going to forgive this person ever again, ever, never ever, because how dare they make a mistake? Uh, everybody makes mistakes. I'm sure you do. I know I have. So it's insane to believe that we can't forgive people um, for these mistakes. And I understand if people continually wrong you, then you have to put your foot down. But if somebody is making one or two mistakes, what is it with our community right now where we just want to roast this person instead of uh, either making it a teachable lesson and forgiving and lifting them back up or doing something along those lines? Again, kindness and forgiveness is what makes this world go round. We need a lot more of it. This world is all about you know insta roast and how cool that is and big gotchas. But again, remember what builds communities and what doesn't. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys for watching. You know, if you guys have gotten this far, <laughs> the last thing I'll plug for you guys is Patreon. That stuff covers camera equipment, that type of stuff. It goes directly to funds. Possibly win a chance to come shoot with me. Pretty cool. Check it out, guys. Love you. Take care.